Hey, welcome to Mark's Basement Arcade EM Enchant Repair. I forgot to put my stinger on. Um, stinger's that little thing that flips back and forth about um, MGC. Got my soda, my Arnold Palmer. Oh, yeah. Busy weekend. As you can see what's behind me, it was a busy week. It was a busy weekend. So anyways, um, let me see, um, we adopted a dog this week, um, which was not really planned, but sometimes when you look for animals at the shelter, you just go when they got something good and they had something and the only time we could get really in was um um friday so we looked at one on thursday night but the only way you could it was like late and we would have to um adopt on Friday, so we had made an appointment on Friday to adopt, but then we, um, uh, my wife didn't like the dog, so we went to another pound and saw two there, one, like, had really, like, wiry hair, little girl dog named Penelope, and then we found a dog named Rupert, which now has a different name, but anyways, we took Rupert home. He was really good with the dog. Um, I like the first dog that we saw at the first shelter, but he was, um, let's say if he decided to uh, run and you were on a leash, you probably were going to get dragged. Um, and if you fell down, you were probably still going to get dragged along the asphalt. And just a little or super, super muscular dog. But anyways, um, then this right here, Gottlieb Victory, that's making all the noise. This I was supposed to pick up Saturday, but um, I got it from Ryan, TurboGrafx7. If you know anything about them, you haven't been watching Buffalo Pinball on um, 8 p.m. Central Time on Twitch, if you don't know about Ryan. Anyway, so I was supposed to get this game Friday, I mean, um, Saturday, but Ryan had stuff to do later, well, around noonish, and then I'm like, why don't I just pick it up on Friday, because Friday I'm going to go by Dave's house and stream with him, so it made a lot of sense, and I'm totally glad we didn't do it on Saturday, because Saturday was so hot. Anyways... When I went and picked up for mine, we went to go put it in the cart, and it was that much too big. And I couldn't get it in my car. So I had to take the head off, which means complete wire harness removal from the head. Which wasn't too bad. And then when I got it home, um, it had a remote battery. On a long wire like this, but I don't know if you can, yeah, you can kind of see, see how that ends green? Yeah, you can't be in a game no more when you're green. I didn't care that it was in there, because, you know, it was holding the high scores, which I wanted to keep, because I wanted something to beat, you know, but that end is green, and it had to go, because it is not staying in any game of mine. So then I put a battery um, capacitor on it, which is basically a capacitor that charges up and it holds the power and it slowly releases it. It slowly releases it like a regular battery, but um, the minute you turn it on, poof, it's got full power. So it's just as good as a regular, you know, you know, like rechargeable battery. These do not go on pinball machines, so. Um, it's like a rake. This, it's just as good as this, except for they don't leak. 
and um, as long as you power cycle it once in a while, it holds all the memory. So, and then my hat, I said I'd wear it. I can't work with it though. All right, so back to Little Chief. I guess we should turn this off because otherwise we're gonna hear race cards. Oh, hey Pack Rat, what's up? And sorry about you having a cold. Sorry about that. And thank you for subscribing. Awesome. And if anybody else wants to subscribe, and if you have um, Amazon, check that out. That's a, a link right there that um, tells you how to subscribe with your Amazon account for free. And I'm going to turn Victory off just because we're going to hear race car noises the whole time. All right, we got that, Matt. I want to see if we can get that other camera up and running. Just want to show you what we're going to be doing. We are going to be doing the first player and possibly second player. We're going to at least do second player. We might do that because we're closest to it. We're going to rebuild these score reels, and then we are going to jumper the credit unit to trick it to think that there's always credits in it, so you never ever have to add a quarter again. Because this game, it still had to use quarters. Or stick your hand in there and flip the door switch. No, we don't want that. So we're going to do some um, score reels. We're going to tackle this and do that. And then we're going to do some relays. And then that's it. We're going to be done with it. Well, with the head, and um, maybe I'll, f no, I'm not going to flip it over and clean the sockets because all the stuff's going to fall all over the place. So, um, let me get my other camera. Let's see if we can get it kind of good. Um, where are we on? Not that one, probably. No. This one? This one. No. That was the end. That one. That's kind of good. Do I have a... All the rest ones are no MGC. So we got your little screen. And then we got this one, which is probably going to be the best for viewing. So you can see what we're doing more. All right, woohoo, where's my naphtha? We'll need my naphtha. We will need some towels, some score reels. Look at those babies, they cleaned up beautifully. Uh, we'll put those on top of Cyclone. We'll get this out of the way here. Um, one thing we will not be rebuilding or even touching is this unit here because it's missing one of the most critical pieces that are very impossible to get. And this just works basically your match. It's on free play, so this is a uh, redundant rodent that we won't be needing. So therefore, we won't be rebuilding it. It is not needed. So we won't rebuild it. I need my garbage can, though. So everybody, I am Mark from Mark's Basement Arcade. There's my link. Um, if you are into these types of videos and you think they're really cool and informative, I have more on my um, YouTube page that are more in-depth on rebuilding. All right, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this puppy off. It just makes it easier for me to clean. Take this one screw off right there. Take the screw, put it there. This just makes this so much easier for me to clean now. You get the green scrubby pad. And the 
this. We just are going to clean these contacts right here. That's that. Yes, um, these are awesome. The, re the reason why I use these eyedropper bottles is because a lot of people, this is basically what they do. They take their big can of naphthar alcohol, they'll take their rag, and they'll put it on the top, and then they'll shake it on there, and then they'll wipe stuff off. Most of the people will still do it once they're dry again. They'll put it back on the container and go like this. And then once you just did that, you took all the dirt off this rag and contaminated your main supply. So what I like doing is I like using the eyedropper and drop what I need on. That way this always stays pure and clean and non-contaminated. So yes, the eyedropper thing is a great idea and I'm glad other people have seen it and be like, hey, that is actually a good idea. Plus, now you've got this little container and you don't have to worry about it kind of like being in your way. So, like I said, just we're just cleaning these couple contacts. That's all that um, this machine cares about. We don't need to clean any other part. What is that? That cord's in the way. Sorry about that. Let me see if I can get a little tighter. Oh, I hear the dogs fighting. They're gonna fight. They're dogs. One dog we had for a long time, so this is his house. He's got a visitor that's gonna live here permanently. So yeah, I've been on a uh, vacation for a while from TVMGC. Not because I have any issues or nothing. It's just my, it's summer and my life is so busy right now. I have, you know, kids' graduations, parties. Um, everybody do, does everything in the summer. So I'm going to be on and off all summer with MGC. But I did just do a big stream of Mark's Basement Arcade on YouTube yesterday. That is pretty clean. Um, I did got my victory and I put it all together. Showed how I fixed some wires and um, put that memory cap on the board and just setting it up. Getting it working. I think that's very clean. That is clean enough. Um, I'll just wipe that off. And since we have it off, we will um, wipe my fingers off. We'll use a little super lobe. Just a little smidge. Don't worry, I guess I got a bunch on my finger. This is just how I do it. Wipe it on there. We just want it on those traces. Really good. Yes, it's like totally slathered on. Look at that. Yuck. Now, I'm going to take it and wipe it off. I'm leaving basically just a microscopic film of Super Lube on it. And that's it. So I want to do microscopic film. That's all you need. I use a glop on it because it's just easier to rub around. We're going to put this screw back that holds it down. Forgot to get my buzzer. So we can clean these contacts real quick. Get the buzzer. The buzzer is basically just a Harbor Freight um, Dremel with um, a real um, Dremel 443-bit on it. That's all it is. And the reason why I call it a buzzer is because it's so loud. That's 
all you need to do to clean that. We will be readjusting it. Um, let's get another towel. Take this coil sleeve out. Because that's garbage. As you can see, this eyedropper thing works beautifully. Take that. This does not need to be wiped off. But you're taking it apart. Why not just clean it? You know what I mean? You know what I mean, Vern? Clean everything that just looks nasty. All these wires are good. None are broke off. Always inspect that while you're doing it. Put a little sleeve. Put that in there. We'll put that like that. We'll grab a coil stop. These have been all went through the ultrasonic cleaner. Kind of looks like crap on the back. <sighs> looks better. Two screws here. And we'll screw it back down. I did have one score reel that I took apart that was missing these screws, which is kind of crazy. And it worked. I think it was player four. So player four does not get used that much. So probably wasn't noticed these have lock washers but I'm still gonna crank them down a little bit all right that is like that all right what we'll need every time you get a PCB you need the cam gear with the appropriate feet on it I'll use this other scrubby pad because it's nicer it's harder but you can also dremel these if you want to as you can see it doesn't hurt your finger if you bump it i don't advise doing that i just kind of wanted to show you guys that now these it's been through the ultrasonic cleaner. They weren't dried off a little bit. Well, they were dried, weren't dried off completely, so they do got like little um, rust-colored spots on it. So we will be taking those all off. And then by doing this, spinning it back and forth in there, it does give it a polish. It's all this nice and polished. This will go back in there, like that. We will need one of these. These I clean off too. All right, that. We will need one of these, which is the lock plate for it. That locks it down into the machine. This goes like that. And there's actually like little holes, nubs that are on the back of one of the plates. I'll show you once I get this screwed down. That kind of like key it. got these nubs on the back right here 
There you go. You can see them now. There's a nub here and a nub there. Those go into holes that are on a plate and it kind of like keys it so it, it like basically locks it down. All right, we got that. We will need one of these puppies. That will go right between these and that's what opens and closes that switch. Um, there, when that cam gear goes, this is what opens and closes the switch. All right. So we have this, this can go on. This will go on perfectly. Do I have to take that off? I thought I didn't. No, I don't. There we go. I was pretty sure I didn't. All right, I'm just touched. Right now I'm just checking the springiness of these and they're kind of like a little over springy. A little over springy to me. These are just way bent, way too far up. So let's widen this out a little bit. So I'm going to take these and bring them down a little bit. They don't need to be sprung that hard. You just need a little pressure on the board. You don't need all that 120 foot pounds of pressure on that. Now they got no pressure. So there was a happy medium there that I screwed up. They needed to go down just a little bit. I did them too much. All right. There. All right, now we got that happy medium. Now we'll need a little gear. Which is here. This goes over the top of that. And which is part of the ratcheting mechanism. We'll need a little e-clip. That will go right over the top of that. And I should be able to push that in with my fingers when I can. Give her a little spin there. Grab another one. Do this. I always forget this one for some reason. Push them in and give them a turn. That way you know they're seated and locked in. Now we need two springs. This little baby one here. We'll go on this lever and then go over on top like that. Uh, let's get you in a little closer. This lever, this little spring is basically what holds this and gives it the, the notching. See how that goes? It won't let it go backwards. It's like, cam, like a cam lock. All right, so we got that. Get back that all down. Now we got a red spring that goes on top of that. So we'll put it on right here, which goes across, and then that goes and locks down that. So as this switches, right now we got both of our switches closed. Um, now it should, this should move. We need um, a 
adjust that a little bit. That is just like way too tight. Down. Next. Opens them. It just seems way too tight to me. out of whack to me. What I'm doing right now is um, I didn't like how tight it was. Now I want to make sure when I'm every leaf switch I move it makes the other one move a little bit. So when I open this one this bottom one comes up just a little bit. This way I know I'm getting a wipe on every switch. They're wiping themselves to clean each other. Okay, that's working perfect to me now. Those are adjusted correctly. And we will take a square reel. Now, square reels, I've said this before, you can see there's a knob here. So, on the other side of that knob, there will be a bump. You can see right here. See that? Here. You always will know if this is here, there will always will be a bump here. And that bump lines up with a cutout on the square reel, the gear, which is right here. I got my tool behind it to kind of like highlight it. That notch lines up with the notch on there. And that keeps the score reel in sync and then my notch is right here so that therefore I know that my reel has to go here in order to be in it and we're in it right now yeah it looks good so let's give this a there we go. for sure I know I'm in it now we're going to get our little tiny screws. We're screwing the reel to the cam. These you don't he-man down. You just kind of like turn them till they stop and they're done. It does, they will tell you when they're tightened all the way. Because it's plastic that you're screwing into, so you don't want to um, crank them down. And you got your big C-clip. That goes on top. I, like I said, I always give them a little spin. That way I know they're seated. Hey, what's up? What's up, Timbo? Timbo Wizard is one of my very close friends that I have met through the pinball community. 
he does TikTok, so if you got your TikTok stuff you could put up, Timball, put that up and share it. Let's um, spread the pinball love around the community. So this is rebuilt. Now this little piece that I put on there is what locks the reel into the base. That's all, that's the only purpose for this thing is that. So we got our reel that looks all brand new. It's fully cleaned. We got a brand new sleeve on it. All this linkage has been degreased, denastied, whatever. Now we got a notch that's right here that goes into the top here. You have to do that first. Let's get this out of my way. So we're going to do that one next. Maybe you can see it better. Uh, there you can see the notch. Yeah, I know. I got too much other stuff. I would like to. Um, there. That, see how that just went in there like that? Now the back. We'll take this lever and push it over. And then it should. There you go. It just clicked in. It's very hard to see what I'm getting at. But if I can get these other ones out of the way. You might be able to see a little bit better. Probably not. Um, if I move you over here. There, let's get my flashlight. There, you can see how that rod, which is right here, that locks in. Now when I push it down, it locks. See how this, it's in there great. You'll get me on there soon. Yes, thank you, buddy. Thank you very much. All right. We got one reel done. Now let's do another one. We could probably do these quick now. Um, actually, which is good. Where are we? Oh, we're right there. We're going to do a reel that doesn't have any... Um, oh, and it's got PCB on it. It does got, but we have one that doesn't. So we're really going to pay attention to this one. But we're going to get on this one first. So as usual, we'll take the screw out. And you notice this stack, oh, you can't see. This stack has three sets of leaves. So this is a little more important than that last stack. This one takes even more fine tuning to get it right. That is nasty. That I can see has got grease on it. So we're going to take our naphtha. And we will degrease it first. I can just feel it. I hope this isn't WD-40, Daryl. It's an inside joke. Just doesn't it didn't feel the right texture to me, you know what I mean? So I wanted to clean it off. It just felt weird. Like something was on it at one time or something left over. But yeah, check out my buddy um Tim's um TikTok page. He does a lot of cool, interesting pinball videos of you know knocking them down or play gameplay or just unusual pinball stuff if, if you're just like watching pinball stuff check him out he does a bunch of cool things i know he's moving right now so he just did like a a little quick um tick tock of all of his games being loaded up in the truck so that's all kind of cool to watch there we go that's nice and perfect did you ever look up perfect in a dictionary if you do, you usually will see a picture of me, if it's the right dictionary. Um, let's use the pinky this time. My pinky's clean. So yeah, that's another joke, if you guys didn't get it. But I'm bump. Now let's leave the cap off. 
I'll put it on the table. And like I said, we take a big glop on it. It just makes it easier for me to spread it around. I like to work it in a little bit. And then we'll take our... This is the other one that we used from before. I have it setting on the side, so we're going to be using this just for cleaning this part. There, nice and clean. Um, since this has grease on it, um, let's buzz these switches clean first. I should have did that before. We'll get that out of the way. We'll get the buzzer. We're going to clean all these contacts super quick. I used to use, oh, we got this one here too. Forgot about that. I used to use sandpaper or 600 grit. I don't use that unless I have to now. This Dremel with a 443 bit on it is superior to any sandpaper or anything you would use. Um, I don't like using sandpaper unless I have to now. It's just um, like the Gottlieb's, you kind of almost have to with short switch stacks. That's a 443. Um, once you use it, it kind of like twirls up into a ball and then it gets like perfect like that. So um, normally it's like flailed out, but once you start using it on a switch it balls up like it it is here uh, let's do this there you can see how it's all eh, balled up it just gets really nice for cleaning all the switches so yeah 443 Dremel and this is just a cheap cheapo Harbor Freight all right, no problem, thank you. Um, this is just a normal cheapo Harbor Freight thing. They're like 10 bucks, you can't go wrong on that. All right, coil, coil sleeve, garbage. Um, we got naphtha on here yet, so let's clean this off. Like I said, it doesn't, this doesn't need to be clean, a coil. It just, you got it apart, why not? Clean the dust off of it. It just looks better when you put the game together. And you can show that you did work and, hey, look, there's clean parts. You know what I mean, Burr? All right, that, new coil sleeve. Slam her in there, we'll slam that in there like that. We'll get a new. Well, not new, but a little coil stop for it. These are all the original coil stops. They're in excellent condition, so there's no reason to replace them. Put one screw there. One screw there. Tighten them down. That's tight. Tight. Let's check these. Yeah, those are tight. Okay, those are all tight. Coil, coil sleeve. Uh, let's bring this camera up and over just a little bit. Alright. Now again, we're going to get a plunger. Clean it off. Just went through the ultrasonic cleaner. It does got a very light layer of rust on it from just click you know drying off so that's why we use the green scrubby pad 
it buffs it off and polishes it. And don't go crazy on this because you're plastic to metal and it's just held in by a rivet. So hold it lightly and then, you know, spin it. I will show you what one looks like versus one I haven't touched yet. Okay, this is all nice and clean and polished. And, um, yeah, it's a bad example because it's really not. Did I just grab all the rusty ones at first? Yeah, I did. There was two that had rust on it, and they're all clean. Well, here, you can kind of see it. This one's shiny, this one isn't. There. I guess you can see that. This one's been polished by the 3M scrubby pad. This will go here, go right in there. I can already see that this switch is going to need an adjustment because when it comes back, this leaf right here isn't really doing much. I will show you better once we get to that point this is clean this will go like that and remember I said we got these locating bumps here and they just locate it this is a dual purpose piece it locks this in and it keeps it regulated where it needs to slide and it also will lock your score reel in so it's like a double awesomeness now i we're going to do one bank of score reels i will be doing all the other ones on my own listening to some motley crew or beatles or something or alice cooper or something random on my jukebox later on. You don't want to watch me do 20 score reels. You might not even want to watch me do five. But, all right, let's get this adjusted first. I will show you what I'm going to do. All right, when this comes in, it pushes on this, which disconnects these two contacts. This front leaf here isn't really got any movement to it. So I'm gonna give it a little turn. So now, when this comes in, it separates them, but when it goes back, it pushes this front one in just a little bit. I can't get any more of a zoom in. This is why I tell people to go to my YouTube channel and check out those videos but when this comes in I don't know if you can see it real good yeah you can kind of see it there um flashlight oops flashlight will illuminate it where did I put the flashlight mm -mm -mm -mm. okay I put it on the pinball machine flashlight that will go like that. This will go like that. Let's maybe get a white piece of paper. There we go. That might work good too. There we go. All right. When this pushes in, you will see those switches. The back one opens, but then now this front one will follow it just a little bit, a wee bit. There. I'm trying to get them both on camera. But anyways, you got that little bit of movement of both leaves. As soon as it goes in, this front one will follow it a little bit and then open. You want that little bit of movement there. That is what keeps the switches clean. Because they will um, they will rub on each other. 
and I'll show you with my hands. Here's your two leaf switches. We can turn that off. Your two leaf switches. Um, they're open right now. So we'll put them so they're closed. It's kind of hard for me to show you this. We'll do it like this. Okay, they're closed. Now when I open it, you'll see my left hand will move a little bit. Now watch my right hand. It's going to hit my left hand and push my left hand a little bit. I'm over exaggerating right now. And that is the wipe that you get on a leaf, which is good. Now when I move my right hand to open a switch, see how my left hand followed it just a little bit? I'm actually going to over exaggerate this now. Open, closed. Open, closed. See how I'm, you're getting that little wipe? And that is what keeps your two contacts clean all the time because they're wiping. And that's what you want with leaf switches because if they just go like this and touch, you're eventually going to get an arc built up on there and you're not going to get any contact after a while because it's just going to arc and carbon it up and never clean it. So you're going to get that odd thing. Because you'll be like, yeah, I cleaned my leaf switches, but now it's like several weeks later, I'm having issues with that. Well, that's because you didn't get the wiping on there. So, you know, they're nice and clean now. So now we'll put this back on there. I just want to see if I got a spring first. Oh yeah. See, that's just like too much of a spring to me. They're like way too up. So I'm gonna tone them down just a smidge. Yeah, there. That'll be good. And we need a long arm. This will go on here, and it will go between. Uh, there we go. This will be go between two of the stacks because we need it to do this type of movement. We need it to uh, close the bottom while the top two uh, open. Close the bottom while the top two are closed. And then when this goes up, it opens the top two. And since there's no pressure on there, it closes the bottom. And then when it's at rest, the bottom is open and the top two are closed. So that's how it knows position zero, nine, and one or eight. It's one of those. But that's just how it knows its positions. Now since I'm going to be here, I might as well put this little um, C E clip on there. Give her a little spin. That's good. We'll get this on there. Push that in all the way. A little wiggle. We get a good spring. Get this. Spread it over the top to hold it down. Get another E clip. Like I, I've said before, these little E clips, take one to the hardware store and go buy yourself a bunch of them. Because if you lose one, you're kind of stuck. You need you need them to keep these from falling apart. Put the spring on it like that. Drape it over the pole like that. It holds its tension on there. I don't like how that's sitting on there. Like that there. Sometimes you got to take them off and readjust them. There. It was kind of laying on there cockeyed where it was rubbing on this cam. We don't want that. There. 
Now we'll get a red spring. That will go on here. And go across. And that also locks that spring down so it can't wiggle off. But it won't. But it just it keeps it from doing that. Now I kind of want to go here. And I want to pay attention to these switches. Top two are closed, bottom is open. Paper. We are tight like that, okay. This makes it easier for me to see too. There. I don't know how good you can see that, but my bottom switch is open. My top two are closed. So I need to bring this through all the way around. Okay, now it should move. Bottom switch closed. Middle switch is closed. Top is closed. Now, since I'm right here, I'm going to check tension on these. I'm getting movement. Not a lot on this next one. Now, this leaf right here is a real tight one. It's a hard, thicker leaf. So I'm just going to see how much effort I have to move it. My move the upper switch this one right here when i'm moving i want to put a little more tension on that because this main leaf that's here is a thicker one so when you got the thicker one you're not probably going to see it move because the leaf is so thick so you want to make sure you got tension on the one that's above it to make sure it it's it's got a good contact. Now we got them; they're all open now. Open, 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 and then the next one. Now we're closed, closed, open. It seems to be going good. I'm going to give that one a little umph to it. i am got my thumb on it because this gear will pop up and then we won't get a, it may come out, this rod might come out of the cam here and we'll get a inaccurate um, assessment of this. Okay, bottom's closed, M middle and top are closed. Open, open, open. Cl open, close, closed. And that's perfectly working correct correctly now. All right, let's throw a score reel on there. And I bumped you again. And again, we got to line that notch up with the notch on here. And that is right there. Sometimes you just got to move these there we go you gotta move them around just a little bit to get them to seat you need it to seat positively otherwise your score reel is going to be off wonky and it's going to spin around on an odd angle and that's even worse because then you're going to have scraping In. What is really awesome is when you're done doing this and you have no parts left over. But I did these differently. I did um I went by two ro two rows of score reels each, so I got two containers of score reel parts and then Perfectly, and then, like I said before, 
It'll take this. I'm gonna inspect the wires. Everything is good. Always inspect your wires. That bottom switch works good. Because these do break off. And if they break off now, this is when you want them to break off. Get that notch in there. Get that lever over, snap her down, and we're done. Okay, now we're going to work on a reel that doesn't have a PCB on it. Which is different, you know what I mean? It's got no PCB. So when we do this, we want a cam gear that doesn't have the horseshoe element on it. This, the copper horseshoe on here is no, not needed because there's no PCB on here. So which makes it easier to work on. So I'm just going to take this and we're going to clean it off. Just got a little scuffy junk on it. Use some naphtha again. This one I can see has got some dirt on it. Coil dust. You will see more of that on your tens and hundreds reels. You'll see more of that coil dust on everything. Just like this coil here. It's just black. You have more of that action on those reels. Especially first player are usually the worst. Because first player is the main one that's always played. You can't play second player unless you play first player first. So that will clean off. Get it all cleaned off. Clean all the dust off of it. Like I said, this is a not needed step. But hey, you got it apart. Clean it. You know what I mean, Vern? Coil sleeve. I'll take that. I'll stick it in here. We'll get close to that. Slide it through the back. I'm usually pretty rough with these wires. Also, you might notice because I want to break them if they're loose. Yes, it seems kind of crazy, but if they're loose, I want them to break right now. So I can do a proper repair on them. So they don't break a year from now, or six months from now, or two weeks from now. It's, it, I want them to break right now. So I'll, I'll manhandle them a little bit. Just to, if they're going to break, they're going to break on me. I don't want this game to go home to the customer's house and then be like, my tens reel isn't working. Well, hmm, you know, why? And find out, well, there's a broken wire. So if I manhandle these now and break a wire, that's awesome. That means it was going to break eventually. Tight. These should be tight, yes. Okay, those are tight. All right, we'll get the buzzer. We'll clean those contacts. That's it. That's really it of cleaning them. And that's just like stained. All right. Plunger. But yeah, that's it for cleaning them. I and it, it does a beautiful job. It cleans them really good. And again, we'll clean the plunger off, give it a polish. So this is what goes in and out of the coil sleeve. So you 
give her a nice polish right there. Slap that there. Get a plate. The locking ring. to the um, credit wheel and we'll modify it to eliminate it so that you don't have to add credits to the machine anymore. This is how I, I do it. I will show you. But um, I do it that way and I'd use an odd colored wire. And you can just cut the wire and bring it back to factory. All right, that's in there. And again, right here, we don't have enough movement. So I'll take that first leaf and give it a little bend towards. Now I got too much. There we go. That's perfect. Take this lever and put it there. Between two of the leaves, get a little baby e clip. We'll get that bugger put on there. Give it a spin with my thumb. The cam gear, push that in. Get that like that. Get that there. A little rocking lever up there little e-clip lock that in there i need to get a drink i'm gonna put some info up on the screen for you there's my mark's basement arcade link please click on it And subscribe. There is a Midwest Gaming Classic link. Everything you need to know about the Midwest Gaming Classic. Midwest Gaming Classic is the largest type of, of its event in the world. And no, I am not kidding. If you are into gaming, you cannot beat the Midwest Gaming Classic for the show that they put on. It is the largest in the world of its style of event. You have everything to do with gaming. If you are in a board gaming, um, what do you call it? Um, computer gaming, video gaming, arcade gaming, um, console gaming, retro gaming, um, cosplay, anything to do with gaming, the Midwest Gaming Classic is your event. It is at the last week of March through the first week of April. The last weekend of March, first weekend of April. Yeah. 2023. Okay, they're closed. The bottom is open. Bottom is open. I mean closed. Everything else is um, closed. Bottoms open. Is that open? I can't tell on that. But yes, Midwest Gaming Classic. If you have any questions about the Midwest Gaming Classic, feel free to ask me. Is that open? Not enough to me. But yes, I, I'm i totally all about the Midwest Gaming Classic. This we're going to put a little pressure on the top one. Alright, let's see if we got that fixed. 
they're all open right now. And this is just a little crazy too far. The bottom one, bottom top leaf does not need to be open that far to put extra pressure on this whole assembly. They're all open right now. They're all closed except for the bottom. They're all closed. They're all open. I want to adjust that bottom one. I want to take it some of the tension off the arm. It's putting way too much tension right here. So I want to take it down. You can see as I, I turn it, this arm right here is actually moving. We don't need that much tension on this. There. Now that bottom is closed. So now I need to take the bottom, very bottom leaf, and give her a little open to it. How is it now? Where did my paper go? Did it fall on the floor or something? Possibly. Did I just put it in a weird spot? I don't know. Let's give it an adjustment. Okay, you are closed. Let's give her a little open. too much pressure on it. I like that. I'm going to bring that bottom leaf up just a smidge. Test these top ones. We got movement. We got a little bit of movement there. So this leaf I will tweak a little bit, put more pressure on it. Alright, those have a wipe to them now. Down, closed, all open, top two closed, bottom open, and that's perfect. That is perfect. So we'll put another reel on that. Okay, let's find out where five is. There's the notch. Get that to rock in there. There. We got her locked down. So yes, um, back to Midwest Gaming Classic. Like I said, is the largest show of its kind in the world. Just because it caters to everybody. If you're just into card gaming, there's a whole area all about card gaming. People will just sit there and do their card gaming all day like Dungeons and Dragons or Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, if you're into board gaming, they have a library of board games that you can check out and sit down and play in a giant room of all these cool board games. 
You know, you want to go there and play Monopoly, go for it. Or any of the other newer board games that I am not familiar with. I'm sure there's a lot of board games. I'm not into board games, except for maybe some of the old classics. There we go. Like butter. One more reel. No wires broke off. Nothing. Nothing's binding against anything. Nothing is loose. Nothing is goofy. They're all good. All right. Let's get that out of the way. Get that to clip in there. Push her down. It's locked. That's all good. That's all I like it. One more to do. Yes, I'm a little crazy. That's the way. Uh huh. Now, since we got it like this, let's just buzz everything. We'll let dirt fly all over. thing why I like this buzzer so much that just fell on the floor these contacts are like riveted in and um, over the years sometimes they get loose and if they do get loose when this buzzer hits them you will actually be able to see them spin spin or move or vibrate that's one big reason why I like the buzzer because it shows that this is icky We'll use a different, a new corner of my towels and clean it off. This is icky. Yeah. I can just feel the caked on dirt over the years probably some coil dust and whatever else nicotine you won't believe what nicotine does oh and there's grease here I see grease that's going let's get my screwdriver I can see grease there shouldn't be any grease on here there was a glop of grease right down in there that's got to go. There. Now I'm worried about this one. What else am I going to find? Nothing. Just a glop of grease there for some reason. Like I said, the 10's reel and the 100's reel are usually the dirtiest they will have the most coil dust and dirt and or grease on them when you clean them you will always find that on those reels dogs are having a blast. Do that or that's my old dog barking. Not my old dog, my original. Our first dog, I should say. That's him barking because he's mad. Sounds like he might be mad. Put the coil stamp in. I mean, coil sleeve. Oh, this one's a little icky looking.
right here. And it's just a, a look thing that's not anything to do with function. I might get out of my way. Wires. There we go. Get that like that. Get a couple screws. Zing them in there. There's one. There's two. Tighten down. Check the other ones. Good. Oh, that one was a little loose. All right, let's get this board cleaned up. And let's use this corner. Like I said, you only need these pads clean up where the cam rides on. That's the only part that needs to be clean. Nothing else. You can clean the whole thing if you really, really want to. But you're kind of wasting your time. Alright, super lube. Pinky. Slather it on there. Rub it around. Wipe this off. Looks good. Like that. Get that through there. That, that, that. Put the screw back. Tighten her down. We're almost done with one bank of reels. There. Let's take this and buzz this off. See the fit on it. These those are just so overly springy. These get so much tension on them. I don't think they need to have that much. I'm just gonna wear your board out. Just way too much. Um, just screen. Yes, that's is. Um, this is just a 3M Scotch Bright. Um, that's it. That's all I use. I recommend highly recommend the, the 3M brand because I have bought the store brand. These do disintegrate. They do fall apart, but the store brand falls apart. Falls apart like. 10 times faster and then you just got green powdery stuff all over which is good but they they don't last as long as the um 3m brand so i have um several versions here's one that i really used a lot that i use for cleaning one thing and then i got a a newer one that i use for cleaning and then I even have a nicer one over here that I use for cleaning. I first, they first started out using to clean Jones plugs. And then when they get wore out a little bit, then they turn into this. As you can see around the edge, it's like new here, but around the edge, it's wore out. And then I start using it for other things. And then when that one gets wore out, then it turns into like this. And then the next step after this is the garbage can. 
Let's see how much of a spring we have on there now. That is good. That, I like that. That amount of tension. All right. Let's get this. And that's what I use for doing these. This one that's all jacked up. I use it for cleaning the plungers. Polishing them. These I went through an ultrasonic cleaner, but once they're, they get done, I rinse, rinse them off and I clean them with a toothbrush, you know, to get any other stuck little stuff off. And then they dry and they do get hazy and a little, um, sometimes a little light coating or rush. And also, um, C818919 Taylor, thank you for um, joining in, you know, for your first chat. Um, I also want to tell you, too, um, if you are, um, if you do have Amazon Prime, you can use that to subscribe to the Midwest Gaming Classic for free. That link will show you how to do it for free. Also, I am Mark from Mark's Basement Arcade. I have a whole YouTube video channel all about EM repair. I have almost 600 videos right now on EM repair. On how to tear apart everything, put everything back together. So if you're in an EM repair, I also have solid state games that are coming on there too. So if you're into any of that, I would ask you to... Please check out Mark's Basement Arcade on YouTube and um, subscribe. I greatly appreciate that. There we go. Now it went down. All right. I'm just rebuilding score reels right now on a Little Chief. Uh, when I do a, a refurb on a machine, I completely tear everything apart like this and rebuild it. So it is the only way I can guarantee a game to work for umpteen years perfectly. A lot of people, they'll just clean contacts and then be done. But you take all this apart and you put it back together clean, it will all work perfectly. And my games, usually when I get done putting them back together, it will have really tiny little um, adjustments I will need to do like a, um, a stand-up switch or something like that and then they usually just work perfect after that but then I test them for weeks too before I give them back to the customer right that that that's clean I'll put that back down there get that like that we have it in the can. There we go. Um, so yeah, I got this whole... This is just two banks of score reels. Um, I like to separate them. So I can do like player one and player two. Or I can do player three and player four. But these are actually player three and player four. Um, all these real parts. I like to swap them um, to the player one and player two um, assemblies because player three and player four never get um, a lot of work um, use so all this stuff is in a lot better tighter more factory condition versus um, player one and two that usually will have 40 years of play on them so I like swapping player um, three and four with player one and two on um, parts. That's just like how I like to do it. You don't have to, but that's how I like to do it. Um, yeah, if you're working on an EM, then I have tons of um, EM how-tos um, on Mark's Basement Arcade, if you want to check that out. All right, we are getting good movement here. Uh, almost good. What EM are you working on? Get a good movement there. 
This is uh, William's Little Chief. They were closed. Open. Those got good tension on them, too. This one probably could use just a little bit. Oh, yeah. Those are open. Um, interesting, not a horrible idea. These are all open. This is a little trick I use that lets me see how the switches are opening. This one I feel... Needs a little tweak to it. Oh yeah, that's good. That's good. I'm just checking the wipe on these switches. That goes down. That we can actually tweak a little bit. Take a little pressure off that one. My goal is to set these switches up so they have the least amount of pressure on them, but they function correctly. So the reel is never fighting anything. It's I gotta continue. Aladdin's castle. Well, I have um some Gottliebs on my channel. Not many, but I do got a couple. Aladdin's Castle's Gottlieb Wedgehead. Correct? Problems with the bonus score reels and the second flip on right. Really needs a cleaning. Yeah, that, I agree. That's probably 70% of the problems. Laddin's Castle. Uh, that is a wedgehead, correct? That sounds right. Um, yeah, um, like I have um, videos on rebuilding score, you know, bonus assemblies. Um, how to tear them apart and put them back together. Um, Bally, okay. Bally, I have videos for that, but they're not fully up up yet. Um, the closest thing I have right now is my Captain Fantastic. But however, you can look at a Williams, any of the Williams games I have, and that will basically show you how to do a Bally. Um, check out my Grand Grand Prix, my old Williams Grand Prix. That's the, one of the most detailed video series I have ever done, and that will show you how to rebuild steppers. Uh, Williams, Bailey, are very similar um, stepper assemblies. Also, some Chicago coin too. But yeah, I just did a Bally Night Rider. But that series probably won't be up for a long time because I am like behind in series. I have games that I don't have anymore that are up. Um, like Lucky 7 right now, those videos are loading. That was a game I finished last summer. All right, and that's working beautifully. We'll take that and all the wires are on. Spec the wires, none broke off. Good. This is a really good solid game too. This was a very solid game. This is not my game. It's a friend's. I did a trade. I got a Roy Clark the Entertainer um, cocktail pinball machine for doing a full shop on his little chief. Okay, that is good. We have two sets of perfectly working EM score reels. So let's move this over. We're gonna go to the credit unit. Probably swing this over here. We don't have to move the power cord. Um, yeah, we will have 
have to unplug it and move the power cord. That's why I leave batteries in them. Uh, let's just unplug Victory. This can go around like that. And where are we right now? Right here. But yeah, I will have um, more Bally up. But yeah, like I said, um, Knight Rider, I mean, um, Captain Fantastic is very close to what I have. It's, I don't have a lot on Captain Fantastic. I do got a flipper rebuild on it. But I have a bunch of how-to videos that are just on how to get, you know, stuff working again correctly. And that might help you with the flippers. Flashlight right here. All right, here's a credit unit. Um, there's two sets of switches on the top. One is for the credit light, and one is just to let the machine know it's got credits. And the bottom stack, oh, which you can't really see. I and mean, you can see my head real good, though. But, um, let's see, can we get a better view of it right here? get in there better okay you can see the stack a little bit all right here's the switches these two right here are to let the machine know it's got credit and the light on the apron to be on this last one here that I'm moving now that is the one that tells the machine it's at max credit we don't really need to mess with that what we're gonna do is we're gonna solder a jumper onto this top leaf and a jumper onto the middle leaf and that will trick the game to thinking it's got credits in it and it will keep the credit light on that's what we want to do right now. Just do those two little simple things. We're going to lie to the machine and say, hey, you've got quarters in you. Really, it doesn't. But um, I like doing the jumper method. Should be in there. Oh, there they go. I threw them in there and they landed on the. What do you call it? But yeah, um, there's Mark's Basement Arcade. So yeah, check that out. That that will help you. They're just gonna take jumper, about that long. Two of them. Cut that off. There. Yeah. Two little jumper wires about that long. I don't need this clipper anymore. There's other ways to do it. Two. You can just desolder one of these wires off and then solder it right onto the other lug. That is something I would do for my game, a game, you know, that's mine. But I like putting these jumpers on because you can just cut the jumper and the game goes right back to um, being factory. All right. These are the two jumpers. Yeah, right here. So I'm going to tin these ends up. Tinning, tinning them is just um, getting solder on them. I'm going to twist them together. 
I got my solder. I forgot to get my solder. Everybody, yeah, yeah, rock that body. The Verizon commercial. Rock your body night. Backstreet Bear. Alright. Okay. Uh, it's can't really see what I'm doing, but like I said, I'm just tinning these wires. Okay, that's one. And two. All my videos that are on Mark's Basement Arcade are, um, they're a lot better than what I'm doing now because I'm doing everything live. But all my Mark's Basement Arcade videos are done where I can stop the camera, reposition the camera, be at better angles. This, I can't do any of that. This is going to be probably fun jumping these with you guys the camera in my way I'm gonna be in the way of the camera too all right oh yeah this is gonna be fun get my soldering iron more in the game but I guess you're just gonna have to see the outcome of it oh, this is gonna be hard try not to block the camera and I can't. Let's try doing it the other from the opposite way. <sighs> and that might work. Okay, that's one. And I just knocked the factory wire right off of it. Yeah. So, but yeah, you can take that wire, that factory wire. Oh, I just burned my finger. You can take that off and just jumper it right onto a, the other leaf. Okay, let's give that a good wiggle. That a good wiggle. Jumper a good wiggle. And there. That is jumpered. Those are on. So now we'll put a jumper on the next two. Everybody. Yeah, yeah. Dead up. That's good, that's good. Let's get this little bottle of naphtha out of the way. This will get bent on like that. This is gonna be a hard one to do. Uh, I just desoldered the top one. No, I got it back on. Did I get it? Yes, I did. There we go. There we go. Two jumpers right there. The game now thinks... It's got credits in it, and it's um, the apron light will stay on. That's why I like using these odd wires, because if you want to go back to stock, you just cut, you just can just snip it right in the middle, and it brings the machine fully back to stock. And then that's that. So this game is on free play. And it's back. It, it can be back to stock by one snip of that jumper. 
All right, let's turn my soldering iron off and move it out of my way. Unplug it. Plug Victory back in. All right, now we're going to move to some of these relays here. We will go through these, a couple of them. Let's get my cap back on. We'll go through some of these relays, how to clean them, adjust them, all around all that fun. We're gonna do them a little different. So I get tired of um, jamming stuff in there to clean it. So we're gonna be a little different today. Everybody, look at that Verizon man. Let's do this, turn you like that, and then turn you like that. See, like I said, normally I can set this up and then start recording on my channel. Make it a lot easier. Take it off. I can totally zing both sides. Buzz it. Buzz both sides. At one time now, maybe, yes, good. First one's hard to get into. And that's that. That's clean. It's a lot easier taking it off and cleaning it. Now with this, I always move them right here with my finger instead of going here because this is gonna give the max travel path the coil actually does when it's energized. I'm just trying to give the most light to you guys so you can see it. Okay, now we're just gonna go Make sure there's a gap in each one of these, and when they close, the next one moves with it. So far, these are perfect. And no adjustments here. They got a good gap. They all close. They all sweep each other. They do what they do. There's nothing wrong with that. Like I said, this game did work. Let's do this next one. I'm leaving the screws out of here because they're connected with this um, loop. Um, and you can't see it because my they're here this loop connects them both together so I can get a little more movement if I just leave them off and if anybody you want to know this is a DeWalt um, gyro screwdriver you just push the button down with your thumb and you can hear it creeping the more you turn it, it will go in the way, do a little bit, 
turner all the way. It just goes by um, hand twisting. I love this thing. All right. Let's get this one. We can clean it a lot easier. Trying not to fight the wire that they're connected with. Those are always hard to do on the edge because you're fighting against the metal. Let's see how much yeah, this one could use. A little adjustment. This last leaf here isn't moving as much as I want to, so we're going to close it just a little bit. This one could get a little closing. And then this last one, I probably bent it when I was cleaning it. Yeah, I might have to tweak that a little bit. We bent it a little bit. Yeah. There we go. So where's my paper? See what the gaps. They're all open. You gotta close. This one could probably just use a little bit. Yeah, I like that. I have to move this in my way a little bit. I like that. That's done. So we got two of the five relays done. We'll screw them back down. Like I said, I find just taking these off to clean them a lot easier than trying to screw around and um, try to get that back stack. You can with like sandpaper but you're not um, probably getting it as good as you can I think that's about it on the head that we're gonna go over because we rebuilt uh, let's 
go wide. All right, we built a we built a player unit. Um, we just went through some of the relays. We went through five of the score reels. We jumped the credit unit. This stepper here is broke and missing pieces, so we can't do anything with that. You don't want to watch me rebuild 15 more score reels. So I think the head series is probably done. I will have to finish this, and then um, I would say next week we will probably take apart the, um, what do you call it? The play field. Oh, yeah. So back to my half and half. So has anybody got any questions for me about anything? What Manny is just made out of or something like that? I can answer whatever... I can. It's 3.52 p.m. My DMD clock says so. That is a Stern Ghostbusters DMD that is made into a clock. And all the animations you see are all DMD animations. There, they're out of pinball machines. Somebody ripped them all and um, put them in a file and then run DMD, made a clock assembly. Somebody on Pinside made the plastic housing assembly. So I bought a DMD and then I bought the run DMD and then I bought the plastic plastic housing assembly and then put them together and then the trick is is finding that finding that zip file that has all those animations on it the run DMD just will make a clock I believe there's a garbage over there <sighs> but yeah anybody got any questions about anything I'll try to answer them but in the meantime if you're typing out questions um, again the Midwest Gaming Classic is the last week of March first weekend of April let's see if this is updated I'm guessing this is gonna say right here it's gonna say 2021 still yes Why they somebody can't update that? Yeah, so yeah, I can normally have this on, and then we could learn about the 2021 show. But instead, I'm gonna have to guess on the dates. It's the last weekend of March, first weekend of April 2023, at the Wisconsin Center in beautiful downtown Milwaukee. Everything you can think of gaming you will experience there. You'll have all your regular vendors there, you know, Stern, American Pinball, Chicago Gaming, JJP, Spooky. Um, you won't find Deep Root there. Um, you won't find Gottlieb there. All the new pinball companies. Hagus was there a few years back. I remember seeing them there. I wish I would have paid more attention to it. But I wasn't into the theme that they had released. So if you're not into it, you're not into it. But I have a thing now where do not play a pinball by the theme. Don't go by the theme because you're like, oh, I don't like ice hockey. So why should I play ice hockey? But when you're in a league, you got to play games that you would never play before and then you played an ice hockey game and now you're all of a sudden you're like damn this is a great game so that's what happened to me 
I had to play um that Gottlieb ice hockey game. I can't remember the name of it. Um, but anyways, I would have never played the game unless I was forced to. And I had played at Ice Review, I think it's called. Um, but that's a great game. So, and this is my newest one. Uh, Gottlieb um, Victory. I never played this game before either. And I played it once and I'm like, this is cool. So, that's why here I just got the set up yesterday. So pretty soon it's going to go vroom, vroom, vroom. So yeah, I just got it set up yesterday. So I got to take these hinges off and throw them in a ultrasonic, and not the, um, my rock tumbler. You picked up a mermaid. Cool. How do you like it? My friend's got the regular, um, regular old-fashioned Fathom. I have not played the mermaid edition of it yet. But how is it? How did it turn out? I would like to know. One of these days, somebody around here local is going to have one, and I'll be able to play it. But Fathom is a great game. So I can just imagine what they did with that, the Mermaid edition of it. But like I said, um, do not judge, ever judge a pinball just by the looks, unless it's Led Zeppelin. And you probably can because, yeah. It's Led Zeppelin. But um, play a pinball first. Give the pinball a one or two chances. It's not delivered yet. Ah, don't you hate that? I have a Hot Wheels on order. I'm confident you'll get it too. I'm totally confident you'll get it. Um, I have a Hot Wheels on order. It's going to probably be winter, very late winter by the time I get it. So since I had that ordered, I ended up buying three games with my Hot Wheels money. I got this Gottlieb Victory. I bought a Williams Space Shuttle, and then I bought a Williams Cyclone because of that. And if you are in, I told you, if you're into LEDs for your, your pinball, like this one is, these are not Comet, but... I will be putting Comet bulbs in this game because Comet is my sponsor. Comet Pinball has sponsored me for another year. Um, what I believe with LEDs, people normally skittle or clown puke their EMs. I have really, really wanted to get um, EM people on board with lighting your machine correctly with EM bulbs. So I reached out to Comet a, over a year ago and talked to them about that and explained what I wanted to do with Comet. And they're like, sure, we will we'll sponsor you. And then with those videos that I have put out on how to EM, you know, LED uh, EM game and how to do it tastefully and beautifully and how you can use bulbs to color correct um, your back glass that is flaking, not to really color correct it, to, but to hide the flaking with a LED bulb. It's just great. So I am um, excited about another year with Comet, um, them being our sponsors, Mark's Basement Arcade sponsor. So yes, if you're into pinball lighting, check out Comet Pinball. Google them up. Um, let me see if I can get a link. I have a link on my thing right here. Here we go. Comet Pinball. For all your pinball needs, cometpinball.com. All your LED needs there. A great stand-up company that stands behind you. I've had a couple little issues, and they have just like that. This was before I was even a sponsor or even thought of it. I had a customer order a kit, and he told me, you know, everything was in it because, you know, it had said it, and I looked at it, and it was kind of confusing a little bit. And 
D helped me out with everything and so um yes comet pinball for your all your em ss whatever pinball lighting needs so yes and i hope you get your mermaid soon i have been following Hagus with all their updates they kind of Stop doing a little bit of um, YouTube update right now and I had messaged them what's going on they were doing good updates and they kind of like stopped I just think there's probably nothing to update right now but yes um, I really believe in what Hagus is doing compared to um, what Deadpool or Deep Root did Deep Root so um, Hagus has already came out with two products and from what I've seen they are very very well built and um, that mermaid edition is just beautiful I love the lighting underneath and how it, it's got that like this where you got your waves or whatever I think that is so wicked how they did that but anyways if anybody's got anything else to chat about um, drop it down Otherwise, um, my new dog's name is Comet, which has nothing to do with Comet Pinball. <laughs> Told you. Um, I had a hurricane, a Williams Hurricane. Then I bought a Williams Cyclone. And then we just got a dog. So I'm like, what can we name him? And I was, I'm like, since I didn't get the dog I wanted, I'm like, I'm going to, oh, I'm naming him. So I'm like, he should be Pinball themed you know named and I'm like throwing out all these weird names like Gulfstream or we'll call them Space Shuttle or we'll call them Flight 2000 what about Gulfstream we'll call them Gulfstream and I'm like I haven't had a comic you know pinball machine I've got I had a two of the the roller coaster I'm like Comet great name for a dog and then Friday I was by my buddy stream and he's like oh Comet like the LEDs I'm like Never thought of that, but it makes sense. So maybe I'll make him a little LED collar and let him walk around and he can be the Comet LED dog sponsor or something like that. I love this stuff. The Arnold Palmer half and half iced tea lemonade. It's like crack. Plus, these are still 99 cents. Can you believe that? After all these years, they're still 99 cents. What is it, like a buck four, buck five a can? Can't beat it. But anyways, I think, yeah, that's about it. I'm going to um, check out. I'll probably play some more um, Victory. I did, one the first time I played it, after a couple games, I did get through all the checkpoints, but now I can't. Um, I'm stuck on um, checkpoint six is the highest I got. I haven't passed it yet, but I will. I get um. I don't know. Yeah, I should be re leding this game. Um, I have to fix some sockets. Oh, thank you for um, popping in. I try to do this every Sunday at um, 2 p.m. Central Time. I try to. It's really hard with the um, summer and just life in general right now with summer. But for the whole um, fall season, I, I hardly missed any days. But um, also check out um, Dave's Arcade. He is also on Twitch and on YouTube. He's um, one of my close friends. And then Ryan here, which is TurboGrafx-7, is another very close friend. Um, that's how, where I got this game from. And then Space Shuttle I got from Dave. But check out Dave's Arcade on Twitch and YouTube. Check out um, TurboGrafx-7 on Twitch. Um, it's kind of like in limbo for streaming right now because he's in the middle of um, having his third kid. Um, check out Travis Hove Gaming. That's um, H O V D E on YouTube. He's a friend from work that's trying to grow his channel, and he does a lot of PS5. Um, check out Tanner Walters. He's the EM scorekeeper guy. 
Um, if you have an older solid state or EM and you would like to keep track of your high scores, he sells a contraption that goes into the apron and lets you keep track of the high scores. Um, yeah, a lot of the old solid states, they do have the high scores, but there's no initials. His little mod lets you put initials. I put one in a Williams star pool right on the apron. It's got a little thing you can put in your initials. Shows your high score. First, I think, five. First five people chose their high score with their initials. Um, check out Pinball Shenanigans on YouTube. He's my brother from another mother in another country. He's up in Canada. Um, Timball Wizard is also a brother from another mother on the East Coast. Check him out on TikTok and YouTube. Pinball Mayhem is one of the ones that helped me um, get into streaming. Um, he's a local guy in Wisconsin. He's not real close to me, but he's, he's local because he's in Wisconsin. He helped me out with getting all the streaming, um, making videos, and just other good friendship stuff in general. So check them out. Him and Ed. Jeremy and Ed on um, Pinball, um, Pinball Mayhem. Anyways, with that, um, yeah, here's my YouTube link again. Please um, like and subscribe to my channel. Like, um, I have almost 600 videos on rebuilding pinball machines. I'm sure something will help somebody there. Um, if you ever get a Grand Prix pinball, I have the most complete um collection on that game. You cannot find a better rebuild series on YouTube, I can guarantee it, than my Grand Prix. Because every single little thing on that game has a repair video on it. There's 29 videos right now on the Grand Prix. So plus I got a bunch of other cool tips and tricks. Um, you will find this video later on tonight on Mark's Basement Arcade on YouTube. It still will be on Twitch. Oh, thank you for following. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the follow. And here's my voice gaming clap. That's why Ryan always would turn this off when he would stream. Um, there's the Midwest Gaming Classic link. Check that out. You can buy tickets now, and if you don't use them, they are forever tickets, just like the stamp. If you don't use them now, you'll be able to use them years from now until the forever program goes away which I hope it doesn't. I don't think it will, but in today's day, nothing seems to last forever, but they got forever ticket. If you can't make it next year, you just, the tickets will stay there in limbo and the next year you could go. But um, I think that's about it. So in about three, four hours, you will find this, probably three hours, you will find this on Mark's Basement Arcade, this whole stream. And that's why right here I keep the chat because it seems to be a little bit easier for me to at least follow a live stream if I can read what questions were so that's why you see that here it's very hard for me to do this because the screen is backwards and I'm thinking it's over here because that's where it is on my screen but it's really uh, right there it's this is just confusing but anyways, we, anyways with that um i guess i'll sing you my song you guys ready should i put the hat on all right i got the hat on i got bifocal so that's why i looked through them funny all right i'll be back it's Sunday at 2, and I'll have more pinball ideas for you. And you'll have things you'll want to talk about, and I will too. Take care, everybody, and later, cool things at the bottom here on YouTube. Thumbs up. Thank you all, and um, take care.